know what's fucked up? My grandparents are Jehovah's Witnesses, so I was bo- I was raised in it. But because they have their own bylaws and like their own, you know what I mean? Their yeah. own laws. Like they don't even follow law enforcement. A person touches a child. In the Bible, it says that any sin can be forgiven. So they think that that can be forgiven. They don't call law enforcement. They have a meeting with the elders, okay? And they talk about it, and it doesn't ever get talked to again. And 95% of the people that they talk to that are incarcerated are sex offenders. So when those sex offenders get out, and they go to the kingdom hall, or whatever the fuck they want to call it, and they study with them, and then these sex offenders touch kids again. If I, if I get high, or they have drugs out at their house, they want to call the fucking cops on me. How does that make sense? Because they love you. They didn't know how, you know, in their generation it was don't enable. It's a different, that's a different generation. Like, who were you closer with, grandma or grandpa? My grandpa. Grandpa? Was he significant? Like, aw? Is he still with us? Yeah. Oh, good. I him the other day, and like, I made him cry. And I was like, you know, I said, well, you don't know what I would give to go out and split wood with you one more time before I go to prison. Were you, you, you said you were, um, went through a bunch of shit as a kid. It just, you don't have to answer, but were you abused as a kid? Yep. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, it's been, it was, uh, like, reported and everything, but they didn't do nothing about it. This goes all the way up the chain to the top, and that's why we're suing the top. Jehovah's Witnesses believe in what is called the biblical two-witness rule. According to the biblical two-witness rule, as they interpret it, unless the perpetrator confesses or alternatively there are two eyewitnesses to the abuse, they can do nothing about it. New sexual abuse allegations tonight against Jehovah's Witnesses. A lawsuit is directed at the governing body made up of eight men. They're accusing of failing to protect children like Kevin Ramirez against abusers. Ramirez claims an elder molested him when he was six it's years million old. million dollar class action lawsuit that's been filed against a religious organization best known for its door-to-door proselytizing. The Jehovah's Witnesses accused of having rules and policies that protect child sex abusers and put children in harm's way. We were sexually assaulted. We were sexually raped. John Michael Ewing will never forget the day this picture was taken. Ewing says he met his abuser when he was baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. I was homeschooled. I didn't go to public school. Um, I think that made me much more gullible and much more trusting. It's definitely trusting. groomed because it started when I was a baby, and I never literally knew anything The organization's else. policy and protocol for dealing with allegations of sexual abuse is seriously flawed and results in further harm to victims of sexual abuse and results in legitimate allegations of sexual abuse this going This organization has allowed the sexual abuse of children to fester within its ranks that's dick. my hope, is that we're able to start cleansing this sickness out. Because that's what it is, it's a sickness. and it needs Six to be- people have filed a civil lawsuit saying when they were children, they were sexually abused by church elders within local Jehovah's Witness Kingdom halls. Attorneys for the plaintiffs, who are now adults, say this involves a major cover-up that spans decades. The lawsuit alleges six children were fondled, groped, molested, and exposed to sexual acts during the 1990s while spending time with Jehovah's Ashley Witness Roderick elders. Roderick Watkins was described as an elder in the Jehovah's Witness Church. Court documents reveal it put him in a position to be close to children. As we've learned, some of them ended up being his victims. People start to come forward, and then more people start to come forward. Cleburne County Sheriff Chris Brown pours over documents that timeline years of sexual assault behind a divine disguise. Watkins was an elder within the Jehovah's Witness Phone calls, church. interviews, travel in different places. In all, 10 people came forward with accusations against Watkins dating back to 1990. facing allegations of sexual... A church representative of essentially raping her when she was a very young child, further accusing church elders of a cover-up. He waited for the room to clear out, and that's when the abuse started. Miranda Lewis of Chester says she was only four when a man named Norton True, a ministerial servant at her Jehovah's Witness Church in Bellows Falls, started to molest her. Says he'd been molesting her sister, Anessa, too. 
Conditions of sexual abuse and the Jehovah's Witnesses organization are moving closer to home. NBC News in depth tonight, an exclusive investigation into yet another religious organization hit with sexual abuse allegations. The Jehovah's Witnesses have settled nine lawsuits alleging church policies protected men who abused children for many years. In settling, the church did not acknowledge wrongdoing. Now, evidence has surfaced that leaders did know about some of the men, but apparently never informed authorities. His typical victims were, were young girls, uh, I think starting around five or six years old. Authorities say McLean, who restored race cars, was a respected leader in this congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. His role in the church was significant because we believe that his participation in the church gave him access to his victims. Were you abused by the Jehovah's Witnesses? Allegations of a massive cover-up of child and teen sexual abuse by the Watchtower has emerged. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and among the thousands of survivors of child sex abuse, we are here to counsel you on your legal options.